She had been brought up believing that the Reverend Moon's family was without sin. We've had a lot of Moon and his family pictures that as a child, I was, as a teenager, we adored, we admired, we looked at those nice smiles and happy family and we thought that was ideal family. The Reverend Moon calls his family the true family, the perfect family. Moon is perfect human being, he's the only perfect human being on the earth. And he can choose his wife and his wife becomes perfect as well. And so his children become perfect because they are from this perfect man and perfect woman. And so when Moon marries more than a thousand couples at once, as he did in New York last June, he exhorts them to live the high moral life that he supposedly exemplifies. The church told us Moon himself had matched each couple by studying their pictures and brief biographies. And the newlyweds say they want their families to be just as virtuous as his. He sets an example um, as to how to be true parents. The world is in, in dire need of strong family values. Mm -hmm. That he not only preaches that, but he lives it as well. They have a true family, and they bring up children of goodness. And without sin? No sin at all. No sin. And drugs? No drugs. Alcohol? No alcohol. Moon's theology that he is the perfect man who can create perfect family, I think kind of falls apart if I look at his children. The Moons gave birth to 13 children, and various individuals who've been close to them told us that in violation of church rules, they have seen some of Moon's children drink alcohol, smoke, and use illegal drugs. And Nan Suk soon learned that her husband is the worst of them. She lived with him here at the Moon's opulent estate north of New York City. She says the Moons knew all about her husband's drug problem, but still they spoiled him, kept showering him with cash. When he needed cash, he went to his mom, and his mom would give him from $1,000 up to $50,000 and some from more. From 1000 to 50000 Yes, depends. Depends what he asks and what kind of mood the parents are in. Where did all this cash come from? I believe mainly it's coming from Japan. Ja when Japanese leaders come in, they bring cash in, and basically they give to Reverend and Mrs. Moon. And, and how would his son use those church donations? He basically used for his cocaine, his party, his waitress, well, hostess, bar hopping, all the fun things <laughs> that a person can do. Those fun things apparently included mistresses. Yojin told her he was entitled to have affairs because his father had had them. And she says Reverend Moon himself confirmed to her that he had had affairs, but the Reverend told her that God wanted him to. He told me in person that he, it, he called it providential affairs. Providential affairs? Providential affairs. What is it's it? providential means it's God's mission. So he had to have these affairs, extramarital affairs, because it was providential. It was God's mission that he had to fulfill. Of course, Reverend Moon does not tell his followers about that part of God's mission. Instead, he preaches that adultery is a major sin. That's the worst sin that Unification Church members could commit to have that will commit adultery. Mm -hmm. Then you will basically burn in hell forever. That's that's the 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 one single most worst thing that you can do. But Hyojin did many times, and his parents know. But there's nothing they do. But worse than the affairs, she says, the Reverend's eldest son would beat her. One awful night, she told us, he pummeled her while she was pregnant with their fifth child. He was doing his cocaine ritual, and against my better judgment, I went and said, I really have to talk to you. I said, I just cannot live like this. And I, I took his cocaine, and I tried to flush it down the toilet, and that's when it started uh, hunting. And I did get black eyes, and I got bloody nose, and... Um, he, but the big fear was that um, he's, he kept saying he's going to uh, kill the baby. I was, that I was, you were carrying? I was carrying. I was seven, seven months pregnant. I was pretty big. And he kept saying, I'm going to kill the baby. I'm going to kill the baby. And that's the, the worst fear I had. Um, that he, he might punch uh, mm. and then something would happen. 
Whenever she told Reverend and Mrs. Moon about the beatings, Nansuk says they blamed her. I was not an ideal wife for Hyojin. That's why Hyojin behaved a certain way toward me. And I wasn't a good member of their family. So also it was my fate. Who told you that, Mrs. Moon? Or? Both, both of them, hmm. yes. And it was my fate that I have to endure these things. Sounds familiar. <laughs> Nansuk is getting support from a surprising source, one of Reverend Moon's daughters, Anjin Moon. She told us her parents blamed her, too, when she was abused by her husband. Did he beat you? Yes. And you would tell your folks? Yes. And they would say? I deserved it. Anjin Moon is estranged from her parents, but she has never criticized them in public before. She and a close friend, Jeannie Honard, said that by coming forward, they hope to dissuade people from joining cults. Off camera, Anjin told us she does not believe her father's the Messiah. On camera, she put it this way. He's, he's just my father. I think that in itself should say a whole lot. Anjin is a moon, but not a moony, not a believer in her father's church. I believe in a god, but I don't think that I want to belong to one particular denomination now. What do you think of Nansuk? Honest? I think she's very honest. Do you admire her? Do you respect her? Do you believe her? Yes, I, I do. I respect and admire her very much. Nansuk got a degree in art history from Barnard College. Though she realized the perfect family was far from perfect, she tried to be philosophical about it. So what you're saying is that they're like... Everybody else. Like all of us who are dysfunctional. I think every family has problems. So they're like everybody else, but a little more dysfunctional than, I think, ordinary middle-class family. Well, they have more money to uh, help them to, to be dysfunctional. Yes. The church won't say how much money Moon has or how many businesses he owns, but over the years he's reported to have amassed hundreds of millions of dollars. Former Moon insider Donna Collins was the first Western child in Moon's church. She was born into it because her parents set up the church in England. I grew up believing he was the Messiah, but I can't imagine it now. Moon took a personal interest in Donna, and as a favored child from the West, she saw a lot of Moon's family. I had more contact with his family than the average member, which is probably what led me to leave, because I saw a lot of the discrepancies between the teachings and his behavior and his family life. The final straw for Donna and her parents came, she says, when they discovered another Moon family secret, that the Reverend has at least one illegitimate son. Moon's daughter confirmed that. That I know of, yes. You know the child? Yes, his name is Sammy. And Anjin Moon told us that the warm family pictures in the church magazine give a false impression that the truth is Moon spent very little time with his children and that he and most of his children have never been close. Nansuk says there's even a language barrier between Moon and his five youngest children. Well, do his young children speak Korean? Re not, not, not really. And the father doesn't speak much father English? Father doesn't, no. So what you're saying is that the, that the young... The younger ones really do not They can't talk to their dad? No, they can't. They can't really communicate. <laughs> Actually, that's what his daughter told me as well. But then I would say the communication that he had, even with his older children, wasn't particularly intimate. Do you worry at all that there might be some kind of revenge exacted upon you for your speaking out? Yes, I, I was um, extremely frightened for a long time. I couldn't speak out, but um, I think there is some safety in going public, and I certainly wanted to support Nansuk because I think it's wonderful that the truth comes out about him and his family. Over the years, Nansuk says her husband became increasingly violent and she feared that he might hurt the children. So, one night, three years ago, while she says her husband was locked in their bedroom after hours of cocaine, she hustled her five children into a minivan, hid them under blankets, and drove them out of the moon's luxurious estate, never to return. Now you live in a modest house in Lexington, Massachusetts. No swimming pools, no bowling alleys, no... Uh... Which? No babysitters, no drivers, nope. right. no cook. You're the cook? I'm the cook. I had to learn. How have the children adjusted to this new lifestyle? Oh, wonderfully. I'm proud of them. They, we all had to learn a new way of life. A life that also includes fear of retaliation from the moons.
they're not going to control my life. And I, I basically have to live with the fear that I have that, that somebody might do something to me. Mm -hmm. But that's life. After telling the divorce court what she has told us about her husband, Nansuk got her divorce plus $600,000 in cash and $9,000 a month for child support. Now 32 years old, she works at a center helping battered women, and she has just completed a book called In the Shadow of the Moons. Why are you telling this story? Because I feel that I was duped. Duped? Duped. I feel I was conned. And I had certain naive, I think, idealism that I wanted to work for God. And I do think a lot of people have that. And a lot of organizations like Moon do take full advantage of those people. And I was one of them. Nansuk still believes in God, but she has a new way of looking at Reverend Moon. I did come to conclusion that Reverend Moon just cannot be the Messiah. What you're saying is that he's a phony. A con man. The Reverend Sun Young Moon is a con man. That's the conclusion I came with. Um, looking, living with their family for 15 years. The Reverend and Mrs. Moon declined to talk to us, but they did send us a brief statement. They wrote in part, We commiserate with Nansuk over the suffering arising from the tragic personal problems our son has faced. We as parents feel a deep sense of responsibility.